Hello, child of God. The purpose of this video is to both teach about deliverance from demons and to command deliverance from demons from all the listeners of this video. Both the ministry disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and Christians oppressed by demons need to learn and understand the basics in order to operate in power, faith, and love. At this moment, there's a war going on between Almighty God and Satan for your attention to this video. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He will give you a clear understanding to the principles of deliverance from demons. But Satan's goal is to distract you, confuse you, bore you, seduce you, and do anything else that he can do to deceive you about deliverance from demons. Plain, simple distraction is one of his biggest tools. Since each of us begin at different levels of knowledge, I have provided links in this video for other teaching subject matter which are directly relative to your faith in Jesus for the work of deliverance. Deliverance as a ministry is the tip of the battle sword and you will always be in conflict with demons whose goal is to discredit and kill you. Please humble yourself to the Holy Spirit and watch the supporting videos. Even if you know all the information and you're bored to tears, you're giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to teach you deep things about deliverance that I have not even said. The more you are aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit and His guidance, the easier and more effective this ministry will be to you. We begin with a simple prayer. You can use your own words, but I will begin with this example. Please pray along with me, and we both will be in agreement. Father God, that's right, just speak the words. Pray to Almighty God the Father. Father God, I ask you now to forgive my sin and wash me with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that you sent the Holy Spirit to teach me and to help me in this life. Please teach me about discernment of spirits and deliverance from demons and all else you want me to learn. Give me both the right questions and the right answers concerning these issues. Add to this wisdom and understanding. Teach me to be always aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I gratefully receive this gift from you as it was purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And no other payment is needed. Amen. We are going to war against the spirits that cause obesity. The jokes we hear about obesity in church is like this. This kind only comes forth by fasting and prayer. Ha ha ha. This joke is funny, but it's just not accurate. Preachers become obese for thousands of reasons, starting with overeating and then the lack of exercise and so on. Perhaps your pastor has become obese for any reason except demons. So I'll choose a pastor that we can call Dr. Anointed. He can be the pastor that needs deliverance and not your pastor. First, I need to mention that the most popular act of deliverance in the Old Testament was the story of King Saul and King David. The prophet Samuel anointed Saul as king. He then received the Holy Spirit and prophesied. And he did very well for many years. But he directly disobeyed God's instruction during a war and obeyed the will of his people. The Holy Spirit lifted off of him and a demon spirit came upon him and tormented him constantly. Because of this torment, which kind of sounded like Quranic depression, he sent for David. And David played worship songs on his harp and sang worship songs. The demon spirit couldn't take it and left for a short time and Saul could rest. We see this same thing in church. We see extremely stressed and depressed people come in on Sunday mornings and sing praises to God and feel much better and joy fills their soul and so on. And many of the demonic spirits have to leave the service, but they're still waiting outside to pounce again as soon as the Christian leaves. The permanent eviction notice on these demons has not been served, so they continue their attack. Christians are not possessed by demons. Possession means total ownership. And the Christians are totally owned by the Lord Jesus Christ because of the blood of the Lamb. These Christians are oppressed and need deliverance and healing. The demons trying to oppress the Christians have the goal to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Demons try to remain as invisible as possible. They teach this lie that demons cannot inhabit the same body as the Holy Spirit. Many Christians die from cancer and other sicknesses that are caused by demons that they could have dealt with. Sometimes cancer is just your body turning against you. 
It is not caused by a demon. It just happens for other reasons. And you can usually fight the cancer off and live a lot longer unless it's progressed too far. No one wants to die of cancer. You can cast out the spirits causing cancer. But if pastor anointed wants to smoke or chew, he will smoke or chew and the cancer will have a loophole to come back and attack him again. And many other Christians die of cancer and sickness caused by years of bad diet and bad exercise decisions and so on. The point I'm making is that it's naive to think that demons do not attack and inhabit the body and the mind of a Christian. And on the other side of that coin, it is just wrong thinking to blame demons for every sickness, every disease, and every trouble. I have ministered to people in both camps. But the paranoid cap that blames demons for everything gives Satan way, way, way too much glory. Over the summer last year, I took my 11-year-old granddaughter on the tour of a deep underground cave in the mountains. The tour guide seemed to go overboard with fearful talk about hiding in the cave in case of nuclear war and so on. And at one point in the tour, the fear-filled tour guide wanted to demonstrate just how dark it was down there with no light. He said that you could not see your own hand right in front of your face. He was right. When he cut the lights off, I could not see my hand just a little in front of my nose. But with the lights off, I heard him scream in fear, and he turned the lights back on quickly. <laughs> My 11-year-old granddaughter was playfully waving around her arms in the dark like an octopus and hit the tour guide in the ear with a finger. <laughs> he said he'd never been touched in the dark like that. <laughs> I guess that guy will never stand that close to people again with the cave lights off. And I'm sure you already see how this relates to the deliverance. We are standing in a spiritual cave so dark that you cannot see your hand an inch off your nose. We cannot see the demons. And if we start waving our sword around, someone will get stuck in the air and be greatly offended. We can still swing our swords in the dark and say, By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command all of you demons to come out now. And we expect those demons to throw the victim on the floor and come out screaming. When what we really might get is an offended person that thinks you're an 11 year old child. Let's turn the lights on in the spiritual realm first before you even begin your deliverance work. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And we need to hear and understand the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask the Holy Spirit in faith to tell you what to do and listen to what he says. If the demons have a right to be there, you need to remove their right first. Then the deliverance will be a lot easier. Every obese person has major diet and exercise issues. We have no authority to force him to exercise. But we can cast out a demon spirit of laziness. We cannot force him to eat healthy amounts of food. But we can cast out the spirit of gluttony and so on. I can give you a pattern of possible actions to start with. But every deliverance is different. And the first step for each of us is to always ask the Holy Spirit what to do and expect Him to answer you. Do not drown Him out with 30 questions that you're not listening or looking for an answer to. You're probably in a hurry, but He is not. Be patient and kind and expect a timely answer. If you do not understand the words or the instructions the first time, Politely ask again, but bind away from the conversation every unclean spirit and all the influence of Satan. Child of God, demons are looking and listening to you for any error in what you say or what you command. They will try to hold on to any loophole in the law which overrides your authority to cast them out. I have heard many times ministers were commanding demons to go back to hell from which they came. The demons were once angels in heaven, and they were cast down to earth by Michael the archangel and his army of angels. There is no place in the scriptures that I'm aware of to say demons came from hell. So those ministers are unknowingly lying about the demons in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth and he will not empower a lie. The demons know God's word and they know when you're adding to or taking away from God's word. These are loopholes. Then there are also deliverance ministries that spend lots of time demanding demons. Tell me your name. 
name. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. I command you in the name of Jesus. Tell me your name. Jesus said that Satan is the father of all liars. And there is only one occasion in the scriptures that Jesus did that. And it was a special case when he asked Legion his name. And most of the time, when demons did try to speak to him, he would just tell them, shut up and come out of him. Some of these deliverance ministers have been entertained by these lion spirits to the point that they have become ineffective. Jesus plainly said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. These deliverance workers are asking Satan many questions, wanting answers. But what they need is to be asking the Holy Spirit for these answers. One of the many loopholes is this curse of the law concerning consulting with demons for information. Jesus did it only once, and there is no scripture saying that any of the apostles did it. Make a safety pledge for yourself. Do not ask a demon for any answer whatsoever, unless you are absolutely sure that the Holy Spirit told you to do it. Demons maintain a claim on some Christians because of sin, and some because of the generational curses that I explained in part one of this series. Our resurrection resurrected Lord Jesus Christ gave us authority to forgive sin and authority to revoke every right, every claim, and every reason demons have to inhabit Christians. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm going to play some excerpts from some of the scriptures that show your authority to forgive sin, your authority over all the power of the enemy, and some scriptures proclaiming Satan's total defeat by the Lord Jesus Christ. My Heavenly Father can see him totally defeated in the the lake of fire. Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Child of God, when we speak a command to Satan's kingdom with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And by his blood, he purchased deliverance for every child of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit will enforce the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ now as I speak. If you are willing to be delivered from spirits that influence obesity, join in agreement with my commands against all the demons troubling you. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive all of the sins of this child of God viewing this video. I speak to you, Satan, and to your entire kingdom. This child of God has been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away every curse against this child of God. You have no legal claim on this child of God. You have no legal hold on this child of God. The Lord Jesus Christ has completely destroyed you, and my Heavenly Father can and see you being tormented in the lake of fire. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I totally revoke every right, every claim, and every reason you have to influence this child of God in any way. And by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this child of God's body, this child of God's mind, this child of God's spirit, this child of God's soul, this child of God's house, and anywhere else you might inhabit concerning this child of God, and leave this country now and do not return. Child of God, you are receiving the blessings of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on you now. Just give thanks unto God.